Hello, I'm Edward Court and welcome to the 10th tutorial on Woodwind Instrument Designer, software for designing woodwind instruments. In this tutorial we're going to talk about nodal interference and top hole placement. We're going to discuss why it's important to regulate the position of the top hole, uh, how you do this in WI Designer, and how you can determine the minimum value for uh, the constraint that sets how high you can move up that top hole. Um, we'll look at how you can gather the, the necessary as-built information in WI Designer and how you can use Mike Prairie's nodal interference spreadsheet uh, to then calculate how far up you can move it. So just for talking points, let's bring up WI Designer and let's bring up an instrument. Same one we've been using in all the other tutorials, a uh, th three quarter inch bore um, six hole flute. Now if we look at this flute, there's a phenomenon, acoustic phenomenon, called nodal interference. It has multiple hats, but one of those hats says that you want to be careful in moving this top hole too close to the TSH, because if you do um, get it too close, you get that octave note playing weaker and weaker until it doesn't play at all. And one of the joys of this flute is a robo robust octave tone. So you want to, to ensure that that hole doesn't go too high. There is nothing in the uh, tuning engine of WI Designer that knows how high uh, you should move it. So I built that as a constraint. So for every constraint, optim for every optimizer in this list that regulates hole positions, and that's every one but fipple factor and hole size only, um, there is a constraint that sets how high you can move that hole. So let's just take one of the common ones, bring up the default constraint. And you can see that the second constraint is bore top to hole six, the bore length fraction. So it's the ratio, let's bring up this picture again, the ratio of this length, and it's from the measured from the splitting edge to the center of the hole divided by the length of the bore from splitting edge to end of flute. Um, in Native American flutes, at least in the formulation that's in WI Designer, the acoustic origin is the splitting edge and so that's why those ratios are measured from there. You can see that the default values are, and we're really only interested in the lower bound, uh, how small a ratio, which means how high up um, the bore of the flute, can you move the top hole. And the default is a quarter of the way, 0.25, um, and the upper bound is a half. You could make it a one, um, but it's kind of silly to make your top hole all the way at the foot of the flute. Uh, and typically you won't hit that constraint. Um, for many people, 0.25 is um, a little bit exciting. And I've heard people use um, a seat of the pants measure of a third, so they don't want uh, this top hole any higher up than a third of the bore. I've found that that puts severe limitations on some of the designs in being able to accommodate the chromatic tuning or the second octave tuning. So I walk a tightrope. Uh, 
Um, I put it as high as I can um, based upon having it play robustly and that gives me the most room for the the optimizers um, to give me the best tuning design. So how do you determine that? Uh, let's uh, First, let's, let's show you um, a spreadsheet that Mike Prairie has developed that I use, and I use it in every single flute that I make. Um, so let's bring up this spreadsheet. Um, it's called Noter, Nodal Interference Check, and I'll show the, you the URL for obtaining it um, at the end of this, this little presentation. I've made only one change to that that program. I've added one one calculation uh, to the spreadsheet, which calculates that minimum whole six to bore length ratio. And if we select the, the calculated cell, all it's doing is taking, and you'll want to make these changes if you use the spreadsheet as well, it's taking the the whole six transition value, this value right here, and it's an acoustic length, it's an acoustic position, so from that you have to subtract K2, this value here, so that's the top part of the ratio, the numerator, and the denominator is just the bore length here. So you can see that equation then is just um, this value here minus this value divided by the bore length. So make those changes if you if you're going this route and if you're not you you're using your seat of the pants 0.3 or 0.33 um, you don't really need to listen any further just set that value in the minimum for your your borehole to top hole uh, ratio right here. Just set it to, to 0.33 and the program will not stomp. It won't put holes any higher than that ratio um, in, the, in its designs. If you do go this more exacting route, make these changes and then save the program, the, the spreadsheet. Now, in, in how you use it for each flute, um, if you listen to the last tutorial, um, I explained my workflow in calculating for each flute the FIPPLE factor. I incorporate in that workflow the calculation of this, this bore ratio. And the way I do it is, um, I will take my as-built flute before I've drilled any holes and I've, I've measured its length and I've measured the, the tone, the pitch that it produces for that length uh, before I've cut it off. Um, and from that I calculate for that flute its fipple factor. Then I enter that into the I modify the existing design of that flute with that new FIPPLE factor and I calculate now um, the design for where I want to put the holes. So let's say this was that resulting design. Um, I've My correct FIPPLE factor for that, that piece of wood for that blank um, turns out to be 0.75 and here's where it's going to put the holes. All I'm interested in, and, and it's it's making, let's say, an, a, an A4 flute, and it's going to be dead in tune for that A4 for the lowest note. Uh, the only values that I need from this design is the bore length and the bore diameter. So now let's go back to my spreadsheet, and I would enter in here the note that it plays, so A4, and if for some reason I'm not not making a, a standardly tuned diatonic flute, I would just enter um, the frequency that it's playing. Uh, 
whether it's 440 or 432 and if you do that do not save the spreadsheet after you're done because you'll overwrite the lookup that he has here but um, if it happens to be in this case 432 and I make Verdi tune flutes um, and let's say that it's the other values we're going to enter 13 inches for the spore length its bore diameter is 0.75 Um, I don't have to enter any more measures than that and it's calculated, thank you Mike, um, a ratio of 0.265. Well I might want to be a little conservative and I'm only typically a little conservative. Um, I would put in then in this design for uh, the constraint instead of 0.265 I'd probably put uh, 0.28 give myself a little bit of wiggle room so I'd put that value in there and then I would re-optimize that design and it would it may not have any effect in moving the holes down and it and it may it may change the design a lot I find that um, if I don't be very careful on this with flutes from about G4 and higher. Uh, um, either I'm going to be in a world of hurt if I, if I make the flute because it won't have a robust octave. Um, but for lower flutes, typically you don't bounce against this constraint. Um, I hope this is useful for you. It certainly saved me uh, a lot of firewood when I had flutes that didn't play robustly and so I put this this constraint in each one of those uh, optimizer constraint sets originally it wasn't in there at all I was winging it so um, that said let's show you some URLs and this will be a very short uh, tutorial as always, the release page is this URL, the issues page for problems, um, bugs, uh, enhancement requests is here. Uh, the tutorial page, a moving target, is here. Um, written documentation for the program is um, on our wiki here. If you want to get a copy of the nodal interference spreadsheet and a paper where Mike discusses nodal interference and also minimum hole playing size which you can incorporate in your in your constraints and thus your designs they can be found in the native flute work working um, Yahoo group under this directory and Clint Goss has a very nice discussion which includes Mike Prairie's paper um, but a lot of other nice nice commentary um, on the Flutopedia site at this URL. Have a nice day.